total we had like 20, 25 dishes. We had cured meats, foie gras, bread. Veal, potato, tartare, scallop, lobster, chicken, fluke, and... And then we had beef, lamb, two pizzas, two pastas, four kinds of bread, cured meats again, tartare again, like three plates of potatoes. And the bread. That was probably the most meat I've had in one day. Set my body into like a meat shock. My name is Jeremiah Stone, and I'm one of the chef owners of Contra and Wild Air. And my name is Fabian von Hausk, and I'm the other chef owner of Contra and Wild Air. So Contra is a set menu restaurant. We do like a tasting menu every night. The menu changes usually weekly. We do like six to seven courses for one price, and we focus on simple food, just kind of built in a way where you get to try a bunch of different things, and then a strong focus on natural wines here, and pastry and dessert as well. We call it American, it's a new American, but it has some, you know, some French influences, some small Asian influences, and I think it's just the nature of European style food. We do stuff that's very isolated around a couple flavors, nothing complicated with the technique. We open a second place called Wild Air. It's a bar, and we just serve shareable plates, small plates, why not? A little more casual than Contra. We cook some potatoes with saffron butter that we make, a bit of lemon juice, and salt and black pepper. Blue crab, lump meat, just heat it up with a bit of a tiny bit of butter and a little bit of lemon juice. Thought it'd be nice to have something with sea urchin and crab and the kohlrabi would be something kind of covering everything. This is one of the two desserts we have on the menu right now. And it's kind of inspired in a Mexican candy that I had back home. It's called Alegria. So we toast buckwheat and then we puffed amaranth. And then we covered it in, in caramel. I started cooking back home in Mexico City in like a small restaurant cafe when I was like 16. And then I moved here where I met Jeremiah at the French Culinary Institute about eight years ago. He was working there and I was a student and we took it from there. That's kind of like where I spent a lot of time just working on ideas. I was doing like events there. And then from there I moved to Paris and we were both working in Europe in different places and we kind of thought, well, if we move back, we should do something together. And so we kind of had that birth, the idea of doing a restaurant. We were talking about doing like an ice cream shop and it slowly evolved into doing a full-fledged restaurant. And we wanted to do something that was what we wanted to make. And that was a way to keep the price down. It was kind of just like everyone's gonna get the same thing. I mean, WD-50 was here before yeah. us. So I think that really helped us just like, I mean, there was already something established. I've always lived around this area, so I wanted to do something here. If you wanted to eat at WD-50 and there was no tables, there probably wasn't like anything else to go to. Wiley kind of paved the way in this area. After we opened Wild Air, we'll switch back and forth, and one of us will be over there, one of us will be over here just kind of running the show. We've kind of worked together enough at this point where we know what to look for in each other's, you know, style. Worked out? Yeah. So far. We started off at Contra and met up with friends. Ben is a friend of ours who's a chef, and he owns a restaurant called Birch in Providence, Rhode Island. Aaron is a food writer of sorts. He's like the kind of person who knows everyone. What does it all mean? What? What does it mean? I don't know. Any of it. Are you going to kill yourself on camera? That's super depressing. Yeah, it is. That's the way to go, though. Don't, don't start with your, like, hostility now. That's our Uber. Where are we going? Not bad. First, we went to Rebel. <laughs> our friend Danny Eddy is a chef from Rebel, which Jeremiah met while he was working in Paris. We just went there, had some food and some wine. Uh, you know what we need? Tell me what you need. What do you mind? Wine. We have some wine here. All right, let's just start with some boo-boos. Dan's like a really fun guy to have cook for you because he's, you know, he's very passionate and he's a bit nutty like us. Rebel Restaurant, a French restaurant inspired by the youthfulness of France and my time in Paris living out there. So sort of revitalizing the idea of what a French restaurant is and can be. I'm trying to make sure that there's approachability in it, that it's not your old school, like stuffy, daunting, expensive French restaurant where it's, you know, suit and tie. You know, we're on the Bowery, so we've got to keep it true to the neighborhood. 
Carte blanche. Whatever you want to do. Whatever I want to do. Yeah. Yeah, everything in the middle. Okay. Let's do a bunch of lobster. <laughs> All right. Just a bunch of lobster. Yeah. Good idea. Do you do, do you do whole pork here? Oh, right, cheers. Oh, okay. It's the sandwiches. Yeah. We drank Robino at Istanbul. It's like a really good way to just start off a, an evening. Oh, I could tear through some ham. I'm like so hungry. <laughs> <laughs> Fluke, brown butter, capers, and lemon. Beef tartare with beef fat, sun chokes, fried garlic, fried shallots. He's had this dish on since opening. Just like fluke crudo with like capers and brown butter. Um, just like perfectly seasoned. We've had some cured meats, foie gras. You can make it like a, a multi-course menu, but it's all a la carte. So if you wanted 10 of those fluke crudos, you know, it's a good place to kind of share. So we had a couple different bites, some good bread. I, I was sorry, I didn't eat all day. Our dishwasher didn't show up, so I was washing dishes, and I think it burned a few extra calories. And then when I saw the foie, I was just like shoving everything down my face. Gentlemen, in front of you, we have our lobster with peas, dirt, and cabbage, as well as our scallop with turnip, uni, as well as chocolate. Huh? You got this one? Can I have some lobster? No, you're trying to add. Have some lobster? <laughs> have some lobster? <laughs> and some gin and tonics, which are kind of kicking it into gear. You guys got one more? Yeah, one more? Huh? Yeah, one more? Yeah. Okay, one more. We had a really nice veal porterhouse. Those potatoes are awesome. Because the veal's so much small, you don't like get so many of that cut, and it's not, it's kind of rare. Yeah, the veal with the potatoes was like such a good, it's like the most basic combination. I could just never stop eating those potatoes. Rocky's limbs, huh? Next? Yeah. yeah. Ready? He's gonna destroy us. Hey! We went to go see our buddy Angelo Romano at Rocky Slims. Angelo has always been like, he'll do the food he wants to do. On one side, it's like a takeaway pizza place, which is like a really good New York slice. And then they use the same dough to make a Neapolitan-style pizza, and they do pastas. I think they were trying to wrap up, and we had like a 90-day aged beef. We had a vitamin... Vitamin, vitamin cocos, <laughs> Negroni. <laughs> uh... he, he basically just away. fed us more than we could. We took a pizza and some vitamin cocos and went to Four Horsemen. My liver says I have to sit in the back. What do you think happened to the Vitaco girl? <laughs> There's no Vitaco girl here. V200. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just slowly dying. I can't breathe. What's the matter? What? <laughs> That's it. Is it closed yeah. then, is it? Yeah. yeah. Oh. The four horsemen are all good friends of ours. So it's James Murphy, Mel C. Sound System, and then uh, Justin Cherno and our friend Randy Moon. It's a wine bar that they opened with a real strong focus on small producers and a lot of the kind of wines we like to drink. They're kind of our cousin restaurant. Hey, can you sit down and say hey for a minute? It's, it's a cool place because like a lot of people go for the wines and then there's like a really small kitchen that's yeah. turning out all this different food in the back. I would say there's French, Italian and really clean American stuff in the mix. And some cheese and potatoes. Yeah, a lot of potatoes last night. Cured meats again, tartare again. James this is a good friend who's really into natural wines, and he's been coming to eat at our restaurants for a while, and that's how we kind of connected. You're on this weekend? Don't know. The wife comes back Thursday, and then oh, and then George. I actually, just I live like two days ahead. Yeah. I live like yeah, don't. 48 hours ahead. That's the max I can handle. I think I'm on the. I, mean, I think I'm on the. I'm on the edge of glory. I I did fall asleep a little bit at Four Horsemen. I was hoping no one noticed. Uh, yeah, it was like a brief moment where I went in and out. Justin. This Justin. When he falls asleep, you know it's time to go. Yeah. All right, boys. Get out. Get out. Bye. Where's our van? <laughs> <laughs> Who's at the restaurant? Nobody. Strike plus the pot <laughs> Did good on the... <laughs> Hey. We went back to the wild there. When we got back, we had some of the cooks from Contra, some of the front of the house from Wild Air. Pretty much both restaurants combined, and then a couple of random stragglers. Let's discover 
I, don't know, I bought some like noodles early in the day. Like when I make Chinese food, it's like I I grew up eating Chinese food my whole life, but I never like worked professionally making Chinese food. So I make Chinese food like I cook it until it tastes like something that reminds me of what I've like liked to eat, whether I've had it before or like if it feels Chinese. I'm gonna do like a Chinese. I'm gonna make some noodles, some like shanxi flat noodles, all the scallion, and then Chinese bacon is like uh, sweeter. I just made a fresh noodle dish with scallions and cilantro, garlic chives, onions. I've been cooking some like ground pork for a few hours, like almost it's almost like bolognese. Just threw that together with shrimp paste and then like some fermented black beans. It's somewhere between Pan Express and like authentic Chinese food. I'm like food hungover. I had like a food baby. I, I'm gonna juice all day and uh, probably gonna see meat for the rest of the week.